Welcome to the Arundel Camera Club live stream for July 22nd, 2020. The club president, John Milliker, is off in West Virginia photographing the night sky along with several other club members. I'm Mike Thomas and I'll be your host tonight. The Arundel Camera Club exists to promote the arts, science, and education in all aspects and fields of photography. Normally we meet at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights in Severna Park. Due to COVID, we've gone virtual and we're doing everything online uh, just to keep our members and guests as safe as possible. Let's go over a few uh, announcements of upcoming events. Next week, July 29th, uh, we're going to discuss the results uh, of our photo assignment, Soap and Bubbles. So please uh, email in your photos to programs at arundelcameraclub.org. I've already seen some photos coming in and some of them pretty creative. Uh, so looking forward to seeing more. August 5th, we're gonna have a uh, steam yard session on photographers who inspire you. August 7th through 9th, we have a tentative field trip to the Wheat Thrashing Steam and Gas Show. August 12th, uh, we'll have a program, uh, a beginning of a series, Influential Photographers. The first one we'll discuss is Ansel Adams. August 22nd is our club picnic and pool party at Jackie Colstock's. August 29th through 30th is a tentative field trip to the first annual Car Carroll County uh, Balloon Festival. Uh, for the field trips, these are tentative. Uh, you know, it depends on how the COVID uh, situation is going and the current restrictions. Uh, we may not be able to uh, go as a, uh, as a group. Uh, if you choose to go on your own, that's up to you. But please, if you're at high risk, stay home. Uh, but stay tuned for more information and we'll, we'll be watching to see how the uh, uh, situation evolves. Uh, right now we're having a downturn in, uh, in statistics, so that's not good. Um, and, uh, but hopefully uh, we'll get to start going out and, and doing more as a group. Until then, uh, let's just stay safe. So uh, right now, I'd like to turn it over to our uh, MPA rep, Ron Pfeiffer, for our MPA announcements. Well, Mike, we have a few things going on this summer for MPA, um, despite the hot weather and um, the social distancing. Um, actually, on Thursday night this week, on the 23rd of July, uh, there'll be a uh, uh, another webinar, Impressionistic photography, how to use your camera as a paintbrush with Charles Needle. Um, and there will also be several recordings of past webinars that you can go to and look at for free. Uh, they're at the Maryland Photography Alliance Artist Spotlight website. Uh, if you look at the uh, screen that Mike has up in front of you, that's got the, the actual um, URL. Now the other presentations that, I under, that have been very good that I've seen has been Rick Salmon on how to get motivated and stay inspired. Another one uh, on a really good black and white, uh, the intrinsic landscape with uh, Chuck Kimmerly. And of course the uh, Brian Peterson uh, understanding color presentation, which I really enjoyed uh, uh, a couple weeks ago. So trying to make sure you take a look at those, you go to the page and if you go down to the presentation right underneath it, It'll have either a place for you to register for it, uh, if it's an upcoming presentation, or if it's a recording, a place where you can click on it and go directly to the presentation. So there'll be plenty of opportunity to keep your interest in uh, photography going this summer. And um, any questions about MPA, feel free to give me a call. Hey, thanks, Ron. Uh, now, aren't they also uh, collecting money for charity donations? Well, that's been an interesting uh, uh, point. We've collected uh, $10,000 from these webinars for the Maryland Food Bank, and that's um, been able, enabled us to be able to feed 30,000, provide 30,000 meals uh, this summer. And uh, that's been really sorely needed at this time. So yeah, we have uh, all the donations we've collected. Uh, at the end of the uh, video, uh, you have a chance, the webinar, you get a chance to uh, click on uh, a button and go directly to the 
Maryland Food Bank and donate whatever you'd like to donate. There's no requirement of any amount. If you don't want to donate, that's fine too. Hey, thanks, Ron. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Have a good evening. All right, everybody. Um, let's get to the main topic tonight. Um, so, as I said, uh, John and, is uh, off in West Virginia, and um, you notice that the audio quality uh, varied greatly. <laughs> I pre-recorded the welcome announcements and, and the MPA stuff, and so uh, I don't have the audio equipment that John has, so sorry if uh, there was some static or hissing or anything like that. Hopefully it was good enough. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk about Photoshop. In particular, we're going to talk about Photoshop content-aware film. Um, so when you think about Photoshop, there are several advanced topics that you, you need to master. You need to master layers blending modes, you need to master camera raw. Um, but one of the things that, that's uh, important to master is content aware film. So in the old days, if you had something in your photo that you did not want to be there, um, you would have to go to painstaking effort to, uh, uh, I gotta mute my other computer just a second. Sorry, uh, had, I'm monitoring for multiple computers to make sure everything's going all right. Um, so you'd have to do painstaking uh, patching and, and, and cloning uh, to, if you wanted to clone out uh, you know, a garbage can or, or spots in your sensor or, or your ex-spouse or whatever you wanted to, you know, that person that just wouldn't get out of the way, that once in a lifetime photo with at the Grand Canyon or something you'd have to go to a lot of work to uh, clone them out using the tools that were available in Photoshop. Um, but now, Photoshop's added this content-aware fill capability, um, and it really changes the game. Now, one of the reasons I chose this topic tonight is uh, when John gave his overview of Photoshop several weeks ago, his introduction, uh, he didn't seem to think much of content aware fill and kind of shied away from it and, and actually demonstrated how it would leave some artifacts uh, on your photo that he didn't like. Um, so my argument is that, that they're making it better and better and that you should try it. Um, and if you don't like the results, try something else. Um, you would be surprised how well it does do. Um, and, you know, they're using artificial intelligence and they're gathering information from the rest of your image to fill in those spaces that you want to uh, remove objects. Uh, so it's, it's really come a long way since its introduction. Uh, so we're going to run through a few examples tonight. Um, the other thing I'll say is that um, normally John has help. Uh, uh, with the Facebook uh, comments, with and please leave some questions in the comments. But I'm not; I'm just by myself, so I won't have uh, any help uh, uh, looking at them and, and reading them. So I'll I'll try and remind myself to go over and look at them and make sure that that I address your comments as they come in. Um, and there's also there's a 20 second delay from what I'm doing to what appears uh, on your screen. So you know have to be careful not to go too fast and, and, uh, and miss the comments and things. All right, let's see. I'm going to bring up my desktop. All right, you should see the first image, which is a, uh, a close-up picture of a bleeding heart. Um, you know, these, you know, there was a whole bunch of these on a branch, and I just wanted a picture of one bleeding heart. Um, but, you know, I have this extra part of a bleeding heart over here on the left. Um, and so I want to get rid of it. Now, this should be a pretty easy thing to do. You could have erased this. Um, you could have uh, masked it out. There's, there's a lot of, you could have filled it with, with white. Uh, there's a lot of ways you could have done this. This is a pretty easy example. The background's low frequency, shouldn't be hard to, to match. Uh, but I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to, get the lasso tool up here on the upper left. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select just a rough selection. Doesn't have to be special. Select the flower. And now that I've got it selected, 
I'm going to do fill. You can see it up here on the edit menu. You could have also used shift F5 to get to it. Uh, but I'm going to hit fill. And notice it just comes up as default. Uh, I don't know whether I've already set it this way or just the way it comes up now. But you have a number of choices. You could have filled it with black or gray or white. Uh, I'm going to use or the background color, foreground color, some other color, a pattern, whatever. I'm going to use the content aware option right here. And let's just hit OK. And watch what happens. Working, working. There it is. So you can see that flower is gone. I'll get rid of the marching ant. That was easy. No fuss, no muss. That's a, that's a, a three second, five second uh, edit to, to, to clear that off of your uh, background. But this was an easy example because, you know, the background's so uniform and, and, and easy to work with. Uh, so that's, that's one of the places that you see content aware fill show up is in the fill menu as an option. Here's another example. Let's make it a little bigger. Whoa, make it that big. Um, so this is a flower petal on a piece of black flexi reflected here. And I tell you, I do lots of these reflection shots of different types, uh, product shots, things like that. And no matter how hard I try to clean the, uh, the, the, the plexiglass, I get spots. It's just going to happen. So what's another option up here? We can go up here to the spot healing brush tool right here on the upper left here. So I've got that spot healing brush. You can see it right there on the screen. And But I've got some options up across the top here. I can do a proximity match. I can uh, create a texture. Or I'm going to choose the content aware option. Here's another place that content aware shows up. Uh, so, again, this is a pretty lo uh, low frequency background. Shouldn't be hard to do this. I'm going to zoom in a little more so you can see lots and lots of spots there. And so we'll just use that spot healing brush with the content aware option. And you just start uh, clone, uh, or healing the, the spots away. Now, you can make your, sele your selection uh, larger or smaller with the left and right bracket keys. So I like to use something that's just a little bigger than the actual spot. And then you just start working your way around and removing any spots that are irritating you and make the picture look bad. So you see how, how fast that was? And it's just looking at the surrounding information. It's a pretty easy example. It's a little more complex when you're doing it inside the flower, um, not a clean, as clean a background. But you can see it still does a pretty good job of looking at the information around the spot and filling in with other information to make the spot go away. Um, boy, I have lots of spots. I am not going to clean them all up for you tonight. That would take too long. But you can see it's not actually a very difficult task. It just takes a little patience. You can also just mark over a bunch of spots and get rid of them. I was just doing the yellow pollen spots, but uh, yeah, you can do the brown spots on the flower if you don't like those. Let's see, what else? Yeah, so here's some other spots that are in there. And again, that's using the, the, the uh, spot healing brush tool with the content aware option. I like this example because it, uh, it has both the easy uh, and the more complex uh, all in the same uh, image. So you would go through that and you would heal away all the uh, spots that are bothering you. Um, let's look at something else on this photo, though. So, look down here at this bottom. 
this black edge here. What happens if I want to get rid of that? Can I come in here and just select that? And then what did I say earlier? I can use the fill. The, uh, we'll do that back to edit, fill, or shift F5. Got that content aware option selected right there. Hit OK. Let's see what happens to that dark edge on the picture. Oh, oh, here it went. Let's get rid of the marching ants. Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, you know, I've got another one of those up here along the top edge. Let's see if we can just shift F5. Not to nowhere. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Marching ants. Hey, that did a pretty good job. Yeah. Now here's where John would come in here and he would just zoom the heck out of the image. And he'd do pixel peeping. <laughs> I'm making fun of him. He can he can he can harass me later for it. Uh, to see if it left any artifacts he didn't like. Uh, but not bad. Uh, let's get that back in the middle. All right, so here's the other issue I have with this photo is I shot it off-center. Eh, I don't think being off-center does any value to it. You know, so I'm going to go over here to the crop tool. See this crop tool right here? And so now I've got the crop tool selected. Um, and, you know, I'd like to get rid of you know, some of the information off the bottom, some off the right. But, you know, I'd like to have a little more space up top. So look here. There's another button up here, Content Aware. It's one of the options for the crop tool. So if I hit Content Aware, as my option. And then I come up here and say, hey, I'd like to add a little space to the top of the picture. Well, normally it would just fill it in with your background color. But I've selected the Content Aware. So let's see what happens when I hit OK. Working, working. Boom. I don't know that it's perfect, but look at that. It added a little bit to the top of the image, and it did its best to fill in with the right information. Now. I think uh, I would probably do a little more work on it because, you know, if you look at it, this area is kind of dark, and this area is kind of light, this is light. You know, I think I would prefer, you know, to give it a kind of a vignette, kind of a uniform darkness around the side. But, you know, to add more information to your canvas, to, to expand your image like that and just use the content aware to fill in the extra space, that'll work on clouds, backdrops, It'll work on all kinds of images. If you just want a little extra room on the edge of your picture, um, this is an easy way to add it without having to do some meticulous uh, cloning and, and patching. It also, you know, I have a little studio in my basement, and so I don't have a lot of room. So I'm always getting the edge of my backdrops and stuff in my pictures, and this gives me a way to, uh, to deal with it. I'm just going to pause for a second to see if there are any... Uh, any questions come in on, uh, on Facebook. Remember, there's a 20-second delay here, uh, but I want to make sure I'm not getting too far ahead. All right. We'll go on to the next example. All right, so this example is just a, uh, a texture uh, purchased up from from someone, um, and I want to give you an example of how uh, we can run into challenges when we do some of these uh, uh, content-aware changes. So what happens if I select the crop tool here, and I wanted to make this texture longer? You know, add, diff add information to the end here. You know, it's got a very distinct, distinctive pattern. Is it going to fill in that for me just the way I want? Um, got my content aware checked up top. 
Let's go ahead and see what happens. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Um, so it didn't do what I wanted. It's not bad. Uh, it's not bad at all, but I would have preferred if the information, uh, you know, had these vertical slats, if one of the vertical slats had appeared here. But that's, it just basically extended that information across the screen. Uh, so it's not exactly what I want. Um, you know, I could clone one of these and, and paste it right here, and, and that would solve the problem. Um, let's undo that. What happens if I actually wanted to add the information up top? Let's see what it does. Again, content aware is checked up top. This is a pretty low frequency example, not too complex, uh, but it's complex enough. So it's working. Hey, so this worked pretty good. Uh, in fact, I would be very happy with that. You know, it uh, extended that texture. It extended the, the slats and the boards. Um, you know, I don't see any obvious uh, uh, artifacts. You know, so if it's just the texture in the background and that's what you're using it for, that looks pretty good. So that that's, uh, I like that. Um, so it worked in that direction. That's kind of neat. Let's go on to a more complex example. Ooh. Again, another uh, background I purchased. Um, so let's do the same thing here. Let's see what happens if I want to use the crop tool with the content aware option to make it a little longer. Let's see what happens. This is a much higher frequency image and it's going to be more complex, work harder for uh, Photoshop to do this. All right. Well, I don't think it did that great a job. It did it okay, so it really depends on what you want to use this for. Uh, but if you look at here, the, 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 uh, the edge of the boards did not extend very cleanly uh, through here. Uh, it's a little jumbled up. Um, you know, so it really depends on what you wanted to use the inf information for, is it, if this would have been good enough for your uses. Um, but you can see it's a lot harder example than the previous example. Um, let's see, what would have happened if we did it the other way? Content aware selected, crop tool, let's see. Make it a little taller. Well, you know, it sort of suffers from the same problem that the previous example had. It sh expanded the information up here, uh, but we lost that slat, we lost that pattern. Um, and I think you'd have to look at the image to decide if there were any artifacts that that bothered you. Um, and there are definitely some artifacts here, the way it uh, cloned things around. Uh, but it definitely didn't maintain the pattern. Uh, and I'm not surprised. That, that'd be a pretty, uh, pretty challenging uh, uh, image to do that with. So let's go on to another example. So I've already showed you a couple of examples using the uh, crop tool with the content aware. So here's another example. Um, this is an Adobe uh, image. I got it as, from the Adobe website uh, where they demonstrated this. Uh, but let's check the crop tool. And what's the biggest issue with this image? Well, it's hard to shoot a level picture on a moving boat would be my guess. So if we come up here, I'm going to uncheck the content aware. And if we hit straighten, it's going to delete crop pixels. So if we hit straighten here, what's the resulting image look like? All right, so it's going to crop the image to fit 
inside of this space, ignoring any of the uh, lost uh, edges because it had to straighten the image, so those white edges around the side. What happens if I hit the content aware? What happens? Ah, so now I get more of my picture. It's going to try and crop it a little larger. I get to keep more of my image, and it's going to try and fill in some of these edges, some of these white edges. Uh, it's going to try and fill them in with some information. So let's see what happens. Working. There we go. I get a little nervous there for a second. Not bad. Not bad. It filled in some of those edges. Looks like it did a pretty good job. I'd have to zoom in a little bit to make sure it is horizon straight. So I got to keep the most uh, pixels I could of my original image and just add a little bit to the edges, and then I get a straight image. Um, that's pretty cool. Again, uses content aware. Now, what happens if I wanted to add a little bit more space to the top? With my content aware checked, I want to see what it does with the sky. Not bad. At first glance, that looks pretty good. So now I, I, my picture is a little more uh, uh, off center, uh, rule of thirds. You know, artist preference, however you like it. Uh, but it gave me the option of adding a little more space up top. You have to decide whether you like the end result and whether that's good enough. Um, maybe you even want to maybe you even want to add a little to the edge. Um, let's see here. just a little bit to the edge there. Let's see what it does. See what they can do that without uh, distorting things. So not bad, but I can see right off the bat, I can see a line right, right here going up and down the image. There's a, definitely an artifact there. Um, so I don't think I like that. I don't think it did a good enough job. Maybe you could edit this and make it okay. Um, it did it did its best, but I wouldn't. Uh, you know, it's not perfect. It's going to require more work. Pausing for a little drink there. All right, haven't seen any posts since uh, Fred said the audio was great, so we'll just keep rolling. So here's an example. Again, I, I said earlier that I have an issue with the, I have a really small basement. Uh, I never can get my whole backdrop in the, uh, in the image. And so you can see, you can see the edge of my backdrop on this, this photo. Um, so it's really easy for me to select the uh, lasso tool and then just do a loose selection around that edge. And then again, we can go up here to the edit fill menu with the content aware and I can hit this is a low frequency background backdrop it's there's not much it's just the plain black backdrop this should work really well boom I filled out the edge we can do the same over here I'm gonna hit shift f5 bring up bring it up content aware fill There it is. You can tell my picture's a little crooked. So if I come up here and use the uh, crop tool on the straighten option, I can come over here and straighten it out a little bit. But see what happens again, it's constraining the crop inside of this box and I'm losing information. This image, I'm just using, losing some black pixels from the backdrop, it's no big deal. If I click on the content aware option, and I keep more of my image, and it's got some little white fringes, edges, that it's going to try and fill in. Working, working, there we go. There we go. 
So that, uh, that worked pretty well. Um, I got some stuff here on the bottom. Can you see it? Let's uh, zoom in there. Yep, there's some uh, schmutz or tears in the, uh, in the backdrop. So if I go up here to my, back to my trusty spot healing brush with the content aware option selected, I can just clone those out. There you go. Very easy. Now, you could use this to clone out that you know, red mark on her foot. That might be all right. Um, you have to be really careful when you start. There's a little mole. Uh, you have to be really careful to uh, when you're doing stuff to people's skin, especially faces, um, because the texture and the color are really important. Uh, so that would be a whole other session where we could do some uh, uh, editing uh, on the uh, on a on a model or, or someone to uh, uh, edit their skin and, and do high frequency separation and cloning and maintain the details and stuff. So I'm not going to use the spot healing brush on someone's face probably, um, but uh, yeah, at least not like this. Uh, I'd probably do it on a, on a high frequency uh, layer um, so I could maintain the uh, texture. Uh, but you can say uh, just a few, few quick edits. And I've cleaned up the back, I've cleaned up the edges, I've straightened the image, and all leveraging content aware. You may even be using content aware and you're not even realizing it sometimes. So I'm going to move over to another image. This is uh, Chris Van Valkenburg's daughter, uh, Bridget. She was kind enough to come over and uh, model uh, for a Day of the Dead photo shoot when we had that death-themed contest last year. Uh, she was a really good sport because she did not like all that makeup on her face and stuff. Uh, but here again, my little basement studio has lots of uh, issues. Um, let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. So let me go select. I'm just going to select the left half of this image where I lost, where I don't have a big enough backdrop. I'm going to hit Shift F5 and do Content Aware. And I'm going to fill that. It's working. Let's see what it does. See how it looks. Hmm. Not bad. Of course, it's mostly a dark edge. Let's do the same on the other side. Shift F5, Content Aware option. It's a little more complex background than the pure black one I had in the previous example. Looks like it did a pretty good job. I'd have to zoom in to see if there were any issues that bothered me, but I don't see any there. Now I'm going to use this, uh, go back to my trusty spot healing brush with the Content Aware option selected. I'm going to adjust my brush size. And I don't like the base at you know, the bottom of my uh, backdrop here. So I'm just going to use that spot healing brush to try and clean that up. Maybe I should zoom in so you can see that better. So this, I've already done that side. I'll go back over here and do this side. So it just magically disappeared. I got a little artifact there. What is that? It looks like, well, it looks like she lost a rose uh, from her uh, outfit. We'll get rid of that with the spot healing brush. Boom, gone. And then there's lots of schmutz on, uh, on the floor. So we can get, we can use the spot healing brush and we can just clone those out really quickly. Again, that's still leveraging the uh, option of having the uh, having the uh, content aware option selected. There's a little bigger spots there. So this is pretty quick and easy 
cleanup of the bottom here. Now, oops, looks like I got a little bit of carpet down here. Let's, let's select that. Too rushed. Select that. And then we'll hit Shift F5. Content Aware. And we'll fill that. And there we go. Very quick and easy. What else can we do here? Let's see. Well, I think I would like a little more headroom in the photo. Uh, it's really tight up here on the edge. Um, so what if we select the crop tool? Again, I've got the content aware option selected up here. And let's add a little canvas to the backdrop there. Uh, all that white area, we're going to use content aware to, to fill it in. Said OK. Working. It takes longer the more information it has to process. Look at that. Looks like it did a pretty good job. Let's zoom up there, see what we see. I don't see any obvious artifacts. So there you go. I've got a more room. That helps with my little bitty basement <laughs> in shooting these photos. So there's, you know, several uses of content aware on this uh, on this image. So let's try. I'm going to go over and bring up my Lightroom. Still haven't seen any questions coming in, so that's all right, I guess. Um, I brought up my Lightroom, and I've got a number of images right here. It's like about seven of them. Uh, seven images that I want to make into a, a panorama. I got these images from, from Adobe, uh, one of their training sessions. So I'm going to go over here in Lightroom, and I'm going to edit, and I'm going to open these as a panorama, merge to panorama in Photoshop. See that menu option right there? And it's going to open them here in Photoshop, hopefully, in a second. All right. So I'm just going to choose Auto. There are my images. But notice here, I've got a new option down here that I don't know that I've noticed before. We can hit Content Aware Fill and, and fill some transparent areas. So I'm going to do it without it the first time so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll come back and do it again with it. So let's do that. It will take a second to process these images. Hey, friend, post something. Let me know everything is still going all right. <laughs> all right, it's going through each image right now. Working, working, working. Terry, that sounds good. I don't see why you couldn't use it in, in lots of different types of, uh, of applications and art. All right, takes a while to get all these images together. All right, this is what you normally get when you do a, a panorama. Is it puts it all together it best as it can, lining everything up, and then you get all this information, these rough edges around the side. You know, because you're sitting there turning your camera and it, you're not, not perfect and you're changing the distance and things like that. You know, so typically you come in here And you just do a selection, and you select as much information as you can, and you just 
crop it. And you lose all that information that was around the edges. And so you can have this nice uh, panorama. So let's go back. I'm going to close this. I'm not going to save it. But let's go back to Lightroom. I'm going to open them again. Edit in. Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. All right, so we've got all our images here. This time I'm going to select the content aware fill uh, for the transparent areas. That's those edge pieces that were rough all around the image. Let's hit OK. This time let's see what, what happens. Yeah, Terry, that's a great, great point. Uh, Matt sizes uh, never seem to match uh, your image sensor or your picture size. And so uh, you know, sometimes you might have an image that you want to be, you know, an 8 by 10 image you'd like to fit an 11 by 14 or something. Maybe this would help you squeeze a little bit out from the edges of your image to, uh, to make it fit. I think that's a good observation. Normally we have to go the other way. We just have to crop and enlarge uh, to make it fit, and we, we lose all the edges and stuff when we do that. Um, but, the, you know, you could, in theory, use it to expand fill out the image. All right, it's working again. Sorry, this takes so long. And my computer's doing a heck of a lot right now. It's, it's, it's streaming, it is running Photoshop, it's running Lightroom, it's receiving the stream, uh, it's managing the stream, uh, doing my audio. I can even turn on video. Hi, you can see me down here in the corner. <laughs> I think we'll turn that off. You don't need to see me. So here's the resulting image when you use content aware fill. It is a bigger image. It has filled in those edge pieces with information. Um, and it just gives you more, it lets you use more of the original pixels of your original captures uh, to create that image using that content aware fill. And you didn't have to do anything other than check a box. I mean, how easy is that? Now, will it always work? I don't know. Depends on how complex your panorama is and, and how much structure's in the image and, and whether it's a high frequency or low frequency. But uh, I know they've done a lot of work to make sure it works with clouds and skies. Um, so that's another use uh, for content aware is when you make your panoramic images. So let's see where I am. I am coming close to the end. All right, here's a lovely uh, Adobe uh, image. Um, great shot downtown DC. And I don't particularly like having the bird in the middle of the reflection. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to do a selection with the lasso tool. Nothing fancy, just a rough selection. And I'm going to do that Shift F5 fill again with the content aware option. Let's see what happens. Get rid of those marching ants. Let's see. All right, so now the bird's go. You know, I know the bird was there, and that little little bit of uh, blue right there is irritating me. I don't, you know, I don't know that someone who never didn't know the bird was there would be bothered by it. Uh, but I think I'm just going to come in here and do a couple of uh, and it's along the side. Huh. I did that with the uh, spot healing brush tool. I don't really like it, so I'm going to. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go over here and use the lasso tool. And I'm going to do another shift F5. You know, you can do fill more than once. And now let's go back. Remember, people are going to be zoomed in. They're going to be looking at it like this. So now the bird is not breaking up the uh, image's uh, reflection of the 
Washington Monument. That's pretty easy. You know, artist choice, whether you want to do it or not. Uh, maybe if you'd waited five minutes, the bird wouldn't have been there. Maybe if you'd stepped to the left, the bird wouldn't have been in the reflection. Uh, but the bird was there and you don't want it there, so you have an option to get rid of it. I also don't like these uh, tow towers in the background. Whoa! Too much zoom. I think we can probably get rid of... Sorry, the phone's ringing. Uh, we can probably get rid of those as well. With, uh, Call from with the spot healing brush. I hope y'all can't hear the phone, but y'all probably can. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm going to use spot healing brush with the content aware option. And I'm just going to try and get rid of these towers. Because they uh, irritate me a little. I was zoom back out. Towers are gone. You can't tell they were there. I think that works pretty good. Again, using spot healing brush with the content aware option. Hi, Elaine. It's recorded, so uh, we'll post it so you can see uh, what you miss. All right. Little tight up top. I think I'd like a little more room up top. So I'm going to use the crop tool. And actually, let me shrink this down a little bit. I'm going to use the crop tool. I'm going to select content aware up here. And I'm going to add a little sky to the top of my image. Let's see what happens. I'm really interested in what's going to happen with those branches. Look at that, I have more sky. Oh wait, what the heck's this? Hmm. Some kind of artifact. So it did a pretty good job with the branches, but you know, there are issues here because it's pretty complex, but I think those issues are easily fixed. So I can uh, come back over here with my spot healing brush with content aware. A couple of swabs there, it's gone. Got another issue right there, another issue right there. Things are levitating or flying through the air. Um, that looks pretty good. Let's see. Susan says, take out the blue water on the lower end of the reflection. Blue water. Hmm. Not sure what you mean. It's all blue water to me. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm baffled by that request. Um, it'll probably dawn on me in a minute what you meant. All right, I think I have one more example here. Let's see where we are. All right, here's another Adobe image. I don't like the photography. I don't like people in my pictures. You know, that's just just the way I am. But here's this photographer right smack dab in the way of the photo. Uh, you just got off the bus. You got 30 minutes to take a picture before it moves on. <laughs> Typical tourist kind of thing. So I'm going to go up here to the uh, object selection tool. Great tool if you haven't tried it. Um, going to click on that object selection tool. And I'm just going to do a really rough outline of this guy. And look at that. Look at the marching ants. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. What a nice selection it made. I lost a little down here. Um, it made it really quick. Um, let's try and get rid of him. So if I go up and do the fill, shift F5 with the content aware, let's get rid of that guy out of my photo. Oh, get rid of the marching ant. Well, that's weird. Looks like I've got a shadow there, a ghost. 
So that didn't work. So let's see, I'm gonna undo that. Oh, Lewis said he can't hear me. Is anyone else having that issue? I can raise the volume. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Anyone else having an audio issue? I'm waiting for someone to uh, tell me they can hear me. Going, going, anyone? I know there's a 20 second delay here. Anyone? Lewis, the only one that couldn't hear me, or is other people having issue? It's okay. Thanks, Jerry. All right. Uh, so I'm going to undo this change I just made. Oops. And I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to expand my selection. Expand the selection. You know, try five pixels. So now the selection is a little wider around the, the photographer. Now I'm going to try the fill option, Shift F5, Content Aware. Let's see how it does this time. Whoa! Well, that's weird. So look how well it did for most of it. But look at here. It's got these parts of a tree. Um, that, it, that it filled in, you know, so it's do, using artificial intelligence. It's looking at my image. It doesn't know the difference between a tree and, and the ground and the background. It took information from the picture and it tried to fill in. And I got a miss, no photographer anymore, but I've got this strange artifact of a tree left in the image. So I don't like that. That's probably not the way to go. So I'm going to undo that. I'll undo that fill. My photographer's back. And so this time, we're going to try a different uh, option. So if we go up here to edit, we've got this option called Content Aware Fill. That's different than fill. It's really strange. I have a fill that has a Content Aware option, and here I have a whole menu item called Content Aware Fill. So when I select this, it's going to bring up a panel the Content Aware Fill panel. All right, so look at what we've got here. Um, I've got my selection, and everything in green is what it's Photoshop's going to use as information to replace this selected photographer. So when you look over here at the uh, preview image, you can see the photographer's gone, but yet it's got this artifact of part of a tree. So what can we do about that? Well, we've got these options up here. Uh, we've got the sampling brush. I got a lasso. I got a hand tool, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to stick on the sampling brush. And see, I've got this plus and minus here. We we'll use the minus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take information out of the, out of the green box. I'm going to deselect things so that it won't use that as part of the information it uses to fill. So I'm going to basically get rid of the trees. So that, that, that Adobe isn't using that information as part of the information. Get rid of whatever that is. So now it's mostly the backdrop and it's mostly the ground. And look at the preview now. That artifact's gone. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that and hit OK. I'm going to get rid of my marching ants, and there you go. I don't know whether it's perfect, but it has certainly helped me get rid of the photographer out of the picture. Um, and if you didn't know the photographer was there to start with, you probably wouldn't notice that anything had changed. You'd have to come in here and do some pretty good pixel uh, peeking here to see that there might be some little artifacts in here uh, that uh, you don't like. Uh, but I think that that's pretty quick and pretty easy. So that content aware fill panel gives you a lot more control to tell Adobe what you want it to use when it does the fill. Um, 
really easy to use. You do your selection, bring up content aware fill, and then uh, use the plus and the minus to add or remove parts of the image you want it to sample uh, when it creates the, uh, the end result, the fill. Um, so, uh-oh, Elaine switched computer so she can comment. All right. I see Terry is crying. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that, let's see, is that my last, uh, I think that may be my last, yep, that was my last uh, example that I had for tonight. Uh, we're about at an hour. Um, so I'm going to pause uh, just for a, a few minutes to see if there's any questions come in on Facebook. Uh, and uh, we'll give you a chance to, uh, for the stream to catch up. And if y'all have any questions, we'll, I'll try and answer those. Uh, but hopefully you see that uh, Content Aware Fill is an option that you should be looking for and trying out. Um, there are a couple of things I didn't show you. Can I swap a background? Um, well, Possibly. Um, you're laughing at the legs, Ali. All right. Uh, so the way I, you know, uh, if I were going to swap a background, let me see if I have a way of doing that quick and easily. Um, all right, not the best image. I could try that one. Let's see here. Okay, so we'll look at, um, I'm going to look at this image uh, of this young lady, and let's see what I, you know, the, there's a couple ways you could uh, swap a background. Um, one of them would be to come in here and use the object selection tool. Select, select the model. And then you know, I can create a new layer by hitting Control J with just my. Oops, where am I? Uh, yeah, my layer down. Oh, there's my layers. So I selected the model, and, and you can see that's an initial selection. It's a rough selection. And then you can drop in behind that, you know, another, some other image or something else to, uh, uh, to replace that background. So that would be one way of doing it. Um, you know, let's see. Select all. Should never... Uh, Never uh, do a, a demo I haven't practiced. <laughs> so let's see here. Yes, I didn't copy it. Let's see. Edit, copy, here, edit, paste. can modify the size, transform, let's move that under that, you know, so you could do something like that to uh, replace the background, I'm not sure that's what you, uh, what you meant. Um, and then the other way would be to mask in, in a background. So let's see. You could come in here and add a, a mask. And then just come in here and uh, select your paintbrush. And adjust the size of this. I'm going to do this really roughly. But you could come in here and actually. 
basically uh, mask in the background, but you still have to make sure you get really close to the model so that you don't have any outlines or, or, uh, and the, or you select the model so that you can get a good, nice, clean background. So I'm not going to finish this, but this is another way of doing it that I see some artists, uh, artists do, and they're really good at doing it and doing it quickly. Uh, I don't do that that very often, but that's the way to do that. Let's see. Susan says, my request on the monument reflection was the reflection was partly invaded by the blob of blue water at the tip. Let's see, where are we? Oh, down here. I got gotcha. you. So could I come in here? So can I come in here and maybe make this a little fill in that little area there? I'll try to shift F5 with the content with the fill tool. Now, whether that meets your needs, I think I see a little artifact there, but it's it is filled in a little bit. So that's a little color issue there, but. Um, if, if that's what you meant, uh, yeah, you can certainly uh, do that. Oops, let's see what we got here. All right, I think I took care of that. Let's see, Rich. Ah, uh, yeah, Rich, the, uh, the content aware features uh, are on newer versions of uh, Photoshop. I have the subscription for $10 a month. I get uh, Lightroom and and the latest Photoshop, and I get all the updates. You know, people don't like paying a subscription. Um, and once you've already paid for CS5, uh, you know, you'd, you'd have to make a decision that it was worth that $10 a month. Uh, at least you don't have to shell out, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars for a new version every couple of years. Um, so they get you either one way or the other. Uh, but at least this way I get more updates and, and new features. Uh, let's see what else we get. That's all right. All right. I think I have answered all the questions. Let me double check, see if I can come back here. Great tutorial, thanks. Excellent presentation. Great, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'd rather do this in person. It'd be much more fun to have some feedback and questions, live questions. All right, I don't see any more questions. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is roll the final credits, and I appreciate all of y'all uh, joining us this week, and uh, I hope to see you next week.